Okay, my first question to you is, how did you get started as a musician? My family uh, influences were my father, who played guitar, and uh, he also he played Hawaiian guitar on his lap, and he, he uh, used a harmonica. My mother loved to sing, and she insisted on uh, music lessons for everybody. So when I was uh, in first through third grade, I went to piano lessons, and then shortly after that, decided that I would uh, play guitar like my dad did, and um, mm -hmm. so that's what I started. Yeah. What is the most difficult part you find being a musician? Do you have a most challenging part you faced being a musician? Yes. I, now that I am uh, involved in organizing bands and the, the uh, band members and accounting for them, it's the human relations and scheduling of resources to get everybody together and get everybody to agree on on what to do. So it, it's it's just another... Uh, you know, leadership uh, challenge, uh -huh. and the musicians they they all want to have their own. Uh, the ones I work with, anyway, are at a point where they want to have their own creative influence on things, and sometimes there's a lot of compromise involved in that. And getting it to happen is has become a challenge. Yeah. What instruments do you play? Do you just play the guitar, or do you play the drums, or the, uh... Well, I play almost all the stringed instruments. Uh -huh. uh, I do uh, fiddling, uh, uh, play the bass, I play banjos, uh, and uh, mandolin. Uh, actually, I think I consider my primary instrument right now to be the mandolin. Mm -hmm. and Recently, I've started taking up some reed instruments. I'm pretty good with the saxophone at this point and uh, trying to do flute and clarinet. So it's a, kind of a to nuts uh, to uh, be able to be my own one-man band in my studio. Yeah. And that's good to, you know, try out different interests instruments you know because there's so di many different qualities to the different instruments that's true and there are also uh, motivations and inspirations for other things to go back and do on a different instrument for instance uh in looking at saxophone performances i run into a completely different uh set of uh, conditions like big band that i wouldn't really uh, be interested in if I was sticking to the stringed instruments. So it's been an expansion, and also it, it uh, expands my listening choices as well. I had kind of lost interest in some of the music in the 1960s, uh, more interested in listening to the saxophone performance, for instance. Uh, yeah. Which is very interesting, you know, because, and plus, the different instruments attracts different audiences, you know. Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. Do you have any upcoming projects as a musician? Like, you, I know you've mentioned you're in a few bands. Do you have any upcoming gigs or, uh... Yes, spring is usually pretty busy because for the past 10 or 12 years, I've, uh, Put a band or two on stage for a Relay for Life event. Uh -huh. When the local Henderson uh, chapter is very uh, productive in terms of generating funds, and uh, that's always good. So my mandolin group, that might be the only performance we do this year because we are their traditional uh, uh, entertainment for their survivors and providers uh banquet mm -hmm. and uh we've been playing at the uh boulder city nevada spring jamboree every year again that's been going back for 12 or 14 years uh to put at least one band on the stage one weekend i i put three of the bands on stage and just about killed myself from all the effort that was involved in moving uh moving equipment and all of that <laughs> yeah 
I'm familiar with one of your bands, uh, Manzanita, uh, with Brian Gardner. I've interviewed him, and uh, he was telling me about that band. Yes. Okay. I, that, uh, that's uh, kind of a throwback for me, because when I uh, had been like what I call a closet music so when someone would ask me to play a lot of the musical selections that are in the Manzapita repertoire were what I would use because uh, you, you could do a lot of uh, you know a lot of those old folk songs and what Brian calls Americana music with a single guitar and people would usually join in and sing along so for most of my the time between when in the uh, service and the time that I prepared from the service, that was the extent of my performances, was going to a campfire or, or a picnic or something and, uh, and doing that kind of music with a single guitar at most. Mm -hmm. So uh, working with Ian, there are some, uh, some of the uh, musicians that I really like, such as Tim Croce, always had a second guitar to add flourishes and that kind of thing. And I'm learning uh, from Zanita Band on how to do that. So it's been an expanse in uh, uh, my repertoire and a renewal of interest in things that I'd uh, done a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, do you still uh, do that band? or Do you have any upcoming gigs for Manzanita? Or Yes, um, sometime in... April, I just got the date yesterday from Brian. We're going to do a, a, a live concert for a, one of the community uh, theater groups to uh -huh. break for them. Uh, and, and that's a full two hours. So Brian and I are going to get back together and add to what we have, which has been more or less a, 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 a we take requests and do what we can or something that's similar to that. But this will mean we need to plan it out in advance and uh, go in there with a real strong show. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, that's good. You know, it keeps you busy, you know, with all these different performances and gigs, you know. You have to keep busy, you know. Absolutely. One of the other music-related uh activities that I'm involved in is musical instrument repair currently. I, I have in the past made quite a few mandolins and violins and that kind of thing. And that's kind of uh, gone into the background now where now I'm doing some repair and restoration of uh, stringed instruments and also some a collection of uh, basket case uh, reed instruments that I've bought with the intention of selling after I get them refurbished. So there's plenty uh, to keep me busy, and I still got, uh, you know, family uh, duties and all of that. My wife and I are uh, in, uh, at the empty nest stage, and both of us uh, enjoying that. Uh, <laughs> always something to keep us busy. Yeah, it's good to keep busy. You know, I keep busy uh, too. I do my radio program three days a week, so it keeps me busy. You know. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. <laughs> My next question is, what is your advice to uh, people who want to be a musician, um, especially younger people who want to start out being a musician, or uh, people who just want to be a musician or a songwriter? Well, uh, I think one thing is to, to uh, have the confidence that you'll be able to do that, uh, that a, a lot of uh, people... Uh, would say that they can't carry a tune so they couldn't play a guitar, but that is, those two things don't go together. So uh, mm -hmm. but I people that have even the slightest desire to pick up an instrument and, and, and get with someone who, who knows how to play it, and that doesn't need to be a formal teacher or something, but somebody in there already, in their uh, sphere of friends to do that. Um, and I've seen, uh, I know of, of uh, some teachers here that teach uh, guitar in the local school district, the Clark County School District, which has had very good success in, in turning the, the academic success around for a person who learns an instrument. It does things to your brain 
that causes you to make associations better. It's very related to mathematics. And so to think of it not just as an entertainment vehicle, but as something uh, to keep your brain fresh. Yeah. And, you know, you have to be positive, you know, and you have to have a positivity of doing this every day, you know, because if you do it for so long, I guess it gets kind of old, but still you have to be positive and, you know. Yes, you have to build in what in your uh, your rehearsal time or your, your practice time, build in little, what I call them, like Easter eggs. So that <laughs> something that you really enjoy doing to... When you when you get to a point where you get as much progress as you can, you know, end your session with something that you really enjoy doing, and that kind of uh, it, it covers the multitude of things that might be boring about uh, learning an instrument very well. Um, and that's something that uh, was uh, at one time I was the president of our society here, and uh, the people who are really world class they will tell you that right away that the uh, their, their practices are 80% really challenging and then 20% what they consider to, to be fun and get them back to loving. Yeah. Well, um, Mr. Carroll, that, um, that was my last question for you and I appreciate you talking to me. And, uh... Okay, I appreciate you selecting me for uh, the, the interview and I certainly appreciate the efforts that you have to reach out across uh, the United States and probably the world and, and get people on your show. So I, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Thank you very much and you have a good day. Okay. You do the same. Goodbye, Trey. Thank you. Bye-bye. And that was musician and songwriter Mr. Dave Carroll. Um, nice man. He... Uh, he told you a lot about, um, you know, how to become a, <clears throat> excuse me, a musician, and uh, as I mentioned, I interviewed a friend and a fellow uh, band member of his, uh, Mr. Brian Gardner, who is our announcer for the Trails radio show, and uh, I wish them both well and uh, all that. Join us tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, excuse me. Join us Tuesday as I'll be interviewing voice actor Mr. John Patrick Lowry and his wife, voice actress Miss Ellen McLean. God bless. <laughs>